Retire on dividends here. Um, so I mentioned maybe last week or so that I was thinking about just doing a review on Coinbase. Obviously, Coinbase is the underlying stock for Kony. And I also mentioned that this review um, won't be prepared um, because, well, two reasons. Um, one, I actually just want to show you guys, you know, what I do when I research a stock. And two, I honestly, I just, I don't, I don't really have the time anymore to do, you know, that much preparation in advance of these extra videos. Um, you know, I only, I really, I have time for the daily videos, which takes up most of, you know, the free time I have, you know, for this channel, but the extra videos, which, you know, this is one of them, these are, these, you know, sometimes I just cannot spare the extra time to do like a full preparation, which that may annoy some people, but some people may like it. Um, it I have to laugh because <laughs> when I did the AI video for, you know, AIYY, I did, did it the same way. And one of the comments was, I feel like my, this is, I feel like this is, uh, I'm listening to my dad explain it, <laughs> which, uh, you know, I already feel old, but I guess that made me feel even older. So anyway, let's get to it. So Coinbase, all right. So the first thing I do when I research any single stock is, you know, I go to Google, I type in Coinbase. Actually, no, I, t I would type in the ticker and then I would type in macro trends. Now, macro trends is a website that stores all of the financial data and it's very helpful i i really appreciate their work uh, it's like a one-stop shop you know it's not necessarily you know going to be accurate right it, i assume it's accurate but i have found some mistakes in the past very few and i'm sure you know typos can happen it's fine um but yeah most of this information it's a little harder to gather when you go to the investor relations web, you know, web pages uh, for the for the under, for the stocks, this is everything like one stop shop. All right, so when I first pull it up, okay, it just pulled up coin, so I don't have to search coin. So now at the top here, I'll zoom in. Stupid, be uh, beware of ads. So I'm sorry about that. I'm just in advance. Yeah, see, like ad. Let me close this. All right, so I hit revenue. And first things first, I want to look at annual revenue. All right, so they've been public, looks like, since 2019. And the, this revenue is in millions. So made, they made $534 million, And then the next year, they made $1.2 billion. And then $7.8 billion. And then uh, 2022, which is the last year, last full year reported, $3.1 billion. Okay, that's a big hit. Um 2020 to 21, very impressive. 21 to 22, not so much. All right, so let's take a look now at what happened. or And then let's take a look how we did this year. So we have three quarters reported this year. And so if we compare it to 22, okay, 22 ended with a 629 million um, in revenue for one quarter. And then it went up. First quarter this year, 773, down to 708, and then back down to 674. Okay. Yeah. So if I look at 21, how, you know, not 21, 22, you know, they had first quarter of 22 is actually much better than first quarter of this year. And then first quarter, you know, again, I mean, second quarter of 22, 808 million versus second quarter. Um, you know, 23, 708. So we're on a downtrend until the third quarter, third quarter last year, 590, third quarter, 23, 674. So it's kind of all over the place, to be honest. Uh, things may change this year uh, due to the uh, announcement of the Bitcoin spot ETF. So we could expect some you know, new revenue coming in. So it's kind of scattered, inconsistent revenue, which I don't like to see personally when I'm inve investing in a stock. But again, we're 
talking about this. Well, obviously, I'm talking about this in reference to Kony, which is a yield max ETF, uh, which sells calls on coin. And obviously, we want it to sell. Co we want coin to be I have a high implied volatility, and at the same time, we want coin to not tank. And we want coin to be a reasonable company that uh, you know a company that we trust and will be around. <laughs> All right, so that was revenue. Now let's take a look at assets and liabilities. So if we take a look at uh, total assets, okay. I, I usually just look at the most recent, you know. So um, last year, 89 billion, okay. Last quarter, 127 uh, billion, okay. Now keep, that, keep those numbers in mind. And now we're gonna go look at debt. I'm sorry. I mean, total liabilities. Wow, that's a lot of liabilities. Uh, 84 billion, 22 um, for the year, and now last quarter, 121 billion. Wow. Shareholder equity, not going to be pretty. Shareholder equity is the difference between assets and liabilities. Okay, so we're looking at 5.4 billion and 5.9 billion. So yeah, it's not, you know, they have a lot of debt. Um, do they have any cash? And how is that trending? Cash, five, you know, it's trending nowhere. It's, it's trending flat, okay. Yeah, 21, 21 was, looks like to be their best year. Okay, so as far as assets and liabilities, they're not in the negative, but they're not impressive. All right, what else? All right, there's all kinds of other things here that you can look at, um, but you know, I, I personally, I would go back to revenue and I would look at EPS. How much are they actually earning? You know, net income, how much are they earning per share? Are they even in the positive? Wow. Oh man, look at last year. Negative 11.83 per share. Not good. Oh my god, look at this year. Negative 34 cents per share. You know, and me myself, I, I judged uh Squee Square Block Inc. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna invest in Squee because they're in the negative, and here I am investing in Coney and they're in the negative. Um, so things gotta change here. Um all right, so, wow. 21 was the last time um, they made a profit per share. Last quarter, not so bad. They're almost in the positive. I, I, I feel like things will turn around, but this is a little surprising to me that um, the, e the earnings per share is in the negative, to be honest. And this is another reason I like to make this like live. I like to make these, uh, these videos live. Shares outstanding. Let's see how the interest has been moving. Yeah, create. Mm -mm -mm. Not much. 200, okay, 237 million as of last quarter. So, again, nothing uh, crazy there. And they do have charts too, which I never even looked at, but it's pretty cool. Okay, so what else can you look at? Well, like I said, there's a whole bunch of other things. But if you go to the financials, You can now look at the income statement and the balance sheet, which is pretty cool, right? So, you know, again, this is how it calculates the their earnings per share. And this this income statement, this is annual. Do they have they don't have the quarterly? Okay, so the last income statement. Um, let's see where where they went wrong. Like what is causing this to go down? Operating income in the negative. Okay, so what pushed them down? So, research and development, 2.3 million. SGNA expenses, 2.1 million. Wow. Yeah, so uh, operating expenses in general, 5 million. So that put them, you know, put their operating income in the negative. So, yeah, that, that cost 
yeah research and development look at look at how it's trending from 19 to 20 to 21 oh my god yeah they're spending a lot i mean yes they are making more but they're spending way too much on you know these expenses and then you could look at the balance sheet together right this this shows the breakdown of assets and liabilities right long term debt 3.3 i think that's billion right i assume this is in millions but wow okay asset the other liabilities yeah cash on hand 5.3 billion total assets 89 billion total liabilities 84 billion shareholder equity 5.4 what the hell just happened? This is the risk you take going live, right? Um, total liabilities and shareholder equity. Yeah. So it's it's okay, right? It's okay. Um, so that's macro trend. That's so like I said, give them credit here. Macrotrends.net is the website. Go check them out. They're pretty cool. No, I'm not affiliated with them, obviously. This is just how I research stocks. So what I would do next is I would look at the Coinbase website. So I'd type coinbase.com. And I would just get a feel, because I always judge companies by the website. So if I look, okay, jumpstart your... And keep in mind, yes, I, I have used Coinbase for a long time, but I only use the app. I've never really honestly even been to the website. So looking at the website, um, keeping in mind that the spot coin ETF got approved today. Bitcoin's up, Ethereum's up, Tether's not moving, uh, but I believe, is that like the USD um, um, coin? I don't know. Solana's up, XRP is up. So pretty cool. Buy, sell, hunt, store hundreds of cryptocurrencies, blah, 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 start trading, wallet. Do more with crypto. Yeah. So the website overall is uh, keeping in mind this is an app version. It's pretty, you know, it's okay. Um, they offer a lot of different tokens and coins to buy, which is pretty cool. Individuals buy and sell. Okay, so if you hit buy and sell, what does that bring you to? Jumpstart your crypto portfolio. $400 in rewards. Great. Who cares? Uh, these are these are the tradable ones. I know there's a hell of a lot more than that. Let's see. Top gainers. Oh, my God. 49% Ethereum, whatever the hell that is. And then the other one, bounce token. Like, there are there is so much different. There are so many different coins. What is this? Like... New on Coinbase, bonk. It's crazy. Like, keep in mind, like when you get into the crypto space, you create a token, and you if you make it to Coinbase, that's it. Like that's that is the ultimate goal, because if you can make it to Coinbase, then you made it big. Doesn't mean it's going to be a good investment. Like Shibu Inu, for example, right? When that made it to Coinbase, like insane. So, all right. So this is the website. What else they got? They got. Coinbase One, this and that, the developers, help center. All right, so I, I rate the website. It's decent. It's okay. Um, now I want to go to the investor relations page. All right, so if you look on the bottom here, it says investors. Every company that is public will have either an investor relations link or somewhere on the website it will say like, like this, investors. Right, you see it? Right there. So I'm going to click that. Now this brings us to the investor relations page for Coinbase. So um, basically, this is just says about Coinbase, which we know what Coinbase is. But important note, it, it started in 2012. So they're not new. They've been around for 11 years. Um, you know, keep in mind for context, this video is being made on January 11th, 2023. Uh, company highlights here quarterly volume traded that's 76 billion that's impressive safeguarded assets 114 billion 100 plus countries uh, 3400 plus employees but maybe with all the expenses they pay they need to cut that back 
sorry if you work there. Um, and that's it. Then it's repeating. This is as of 930. All right. And then here's some news, latest news that they put. Um, okay. So they have third quarter. Uh, this blue font, um, whoever runs their website, it's not good. Um, they should not have this color um, for, for a black background. All right. So they have third quarter earnings call. Let's look at the shareholders letter. Okay. Okay. Nice and big visual. Okay. Anything important here? Yeah, it just shows, you know, net revenue. Here's, here's a Q3 outlook. Q3 actuals, at least 300. Again, I don't want to bore you with numbers. We kind of just already looked at the numbers. So here's the revenue breakdown, total transaction revenue. It's going, um, yeah, it's on the downward, unfortunately, but hopefully that'll get better. Subscription and service revenue. Uh, that's on the upward because it's from left to right is oldest to newest. So that is, well, it's kind of on the upward. Overall crypto market cap declined 9% quarter over quarter to 1.1 trillion when comparing the end of Q3 to the end of Q2. Yeah. Well, market's been red over the past year or so. It's finally getting a little better. Again, this just has breakdowns of different sections. Transaction expense. The percent of net revenue is transaction. 15, 15% of their net revenue is transaction expenses. Oh my God. Because they rip you off. They're, when you buy and sell and send tokens, coins, it is very high. The fees are very high. Obviously, that's good if you're a coin investor, but it's not if you're a, you're a Coinbase user. The one thing about Binance is their, uh, their transaction fees are much cheaper, but they trade on their Binance smart chain and that is cheaper to trade on versus uh, what Coinbase uses. Like, it depends if it's Bitcoin or Ethereum. Full-time employees, end of quarter. Oh, wow, they did cut back employees since uh, 22. So, okay. Where is the gap, man? Where is the gap? Uh, other operating expenses, 18.9 to 3.5. Yeah, that's, that'd be ugly. So they're, I'm not gonna say they're new, but they, they gotta get their crap together, man. They gotta be profitable here. Corporate cash. All right, what is this? Our strategy, crypto as an asset class. Building trusted crypto products to help bring economic freedom and opportunity to 1 billion people. Um, okay. Again, this is just, uh, I mentioned before, um, I hate reading. I don't know if you guys hate reading too, but I like uh, visuals. Like if they had pictures to, you know, here we go. Here's a picture, 83%. Of the G20 and major financial hubs have either passed national crypto legislation or have crypto regulations in place. Okay. So, you know, this is important because a lot of countries uh, in the beginning, they weren't allowing anything, you know, with crypto. Like you can't, it's illegal, like for you to even use crypto. And, you know, they try to regulate. It's hard, but they, they try and they ban it. Uh, with transaction revenue, we generate approximately 105 million total transaction revenue in October, though we urge caution in extrapolating these results. Okay. Uh, subscription and service revenue flat. Yeah. I mean, they're going to, they have earnings coming up and I think in February. So we'll have a, we'll have a better idea how it's trending. Um, I know Bitcoin's been up since last quarter so it may be maybe looking good transaction uh, revenue wise 
And then here's, you know, we kind of went through all this, but this is just, you know, the breakdown of their balance sheet and the income statement, if you guys do care. We went over the total numbers, so I'm not going to really go through this again. All right, so if I go back. All right, so now they also have the earnings call transcript. What We don't have time to read that, that is for sure. Analyst Q&A. Let's see if that is at least interesting. No, this is way too much information. It's probably, uh, you know, softball questions. Who knows? Um, Coinbase to participate in the Goldman Sachs Financial Service Conference. Yeah, whatever. Um, okay. What the heck is this? This is, uh, oh, these are their tweets. Okay. Spot, spot Bitcoin ETFs have arrived in the U.S. Breaking news. The Bitcoin white paper. All right, enough of your tweets. Let's get past the tweets. Learn. What is Bitcoin? Okay, so they explain what Bitcoin is. It's first uh, widely adopted cryptocurrency. What is crypto? Market updates, investor content. You could sign up for emails, which is pretty cool, which I actually probably should. Um, and that, that is it. What is blockchain? How to set up a crypto wallet. Taxes. Looks like you can get a credit card through them. Help center. Uh, yeah, so that is the gist of it. Um, so didn't show their chart click this events and presentations let's see what they have under presentations uh, there's a video 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 I don't even know if I'm allowed to play their videos on my video so I'm not going to uh, they have a prospectus I'm not gonna get into that stock yeah let's check out stock it wait I click stock information. This is the only thing that comes up. Analyst coverage. That's it. That's weak. I was hoping for like a five year chart or something. Resources. Yeah, financials. We went we went through all that news. Okay. Alright, so if I want to pull up a chart, I can type coin stock. probably come up if I didn't hit stock and then chart all right so this um, actually yeah you could do it essentially like right through Google which is pretty cool so year to date um, you know where are it see yeah, it doesn't show the percentages I don't like that Yahoo Finance probably going to bring me to the app. Let's try Trading View. Tradingview.com. Okay. All right. So this is a very big chart. But, okay. So it has this down here. I like that. All right. All time, we're down 60%. That means when they first launched, when they went public, they were probably overpriced. Five-year chart, 60%. Well, they went public less than five years, so that makes sense. One-year chart, 300%. This is why we're getting, you know, the Coney investors are sit sitting pretty, right? Over the past year or so, it's been doing pretty good. And if you're a yield max investor in general, they, you typically get, get the opposite, right? They launch a fund, and sure enough, the underlying tax. This was not the case. Year to date, we're down 12.56. Yeah, there's some consolidation right now. Uh, but since this ETF launched, you know, get ready, man. Six month chart, 41%. One month chart, 6.92%. So, yeah, this is what kind of what it looks like. Stupid pop ups. Um, yeah, this chart is going over how long today? Yeah, so we're on the up and up. I don't know. This doesn't even show pre market. Market cap is thirty six billion, right? Is that the billions? No, it must be. 
question. Well, that doesn't help. Useless. All right, about Coinbase, CEO is Brian Armstrong. We covered a lot of this. Financials, not pretty. Uh, so Trading View, pretty good website, looks like. Not bad. All right, so the other thing is if you go to Bar Chart, barchart.com, They track um, implied volatility, you know, they, of, uh, of, of the stocks. I don't know why it's not coming up. But... All right, forget it. I'll do this. Coin. IV. Again, some of you be, may be getting bored with this type of video. But I hope it, hopefully it helps people who just they want to do this research on their own, right? So this is just you know what I do, and hopefully it helps a little. Um, so here's coin. Let's go to the IV. All right. So uh, this shows the IV on the uh, the actual different uh, trend, the calls and the puts, which is pretty interesting. I just want to see like the overall implied volatility. Close this out. Implied volatility, 180%. What? All right, historical volatility, 72%. So look at the IVs on the, oh my God, over 100%. If this is new, like current, wow. Oh, look at the pre-market, we're at 159. So that's pretty, that's pretty damn amazing. Wow, view all filters. Expiration stacked. Yeah, I want to view that near the money stack. Side by side. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So bar chart um, is usually you know it's a good source to search it. Uh, this just shows you one view. I don't want to click anything and screw it up even more. But actually, let me go back. I click maybe this is a better link yeah so this is implied volatility rank implied vol let's sort it by highest mara coin 80 yeah so there it is 83 percent so coin is 83 percent implied volatility look at mara man amc is always high but yeah iv rank so yeah um that's just a few things that you could do if you want to search. Again, this is barchart.com. But when you, if you want to search to see if something is a good investment, obviously you should do your own research. And um, also, I'm not a financial advisor, so this video is just for fun and entertainment. Um, but I just wanted to do a, just a quick, simple review of you know. Again, I'm prepared. That's just how I do things usually. It is what it is. If you don't like it, then I'm sorry, but. If you made it this far, obviously you may have liked it. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, but let me know your thoughts. Do you think coin is a good investment, even though they're in the negative EPS wise? Um, or, you know, do you think it's uh, too, too high risk? Personally, I don't own coin, but I own Coney. And I own it for the high IV. And I own it because coin is essentially, uh, oh, one other thing I wanted to do coinbase competitors because i always say it's a monopoly right do they really have competitors i believe when it comes to the u.s they don't um so this is a top 10 exchange alternatives and competitors they have a. I was hoping for like a list of like how much nine best um, like how much each website has all right here's coinbase.com bounce rate 
visits. Queen Gecko. Yeah. Top Coinbase alternatives. Yeah, this is not giving me what I want, but let's just look at the top, what they listed. So they listed Binance. Okay, I agree. Binance, there's Kraken, there's Robinhood, Gemini, uh, eToro, Uphold, Bitstamp, Kuk you know. I'm going to guess that you guys have not heard of most of these. Binance, I'm sure everyone's heard of. Robinhood, everyone's heard of. Kraken, maybe half of you have heard of. But, you know, maybe Gemini too. But the rest of these really... There is no competition, right? There's just, it's just Coinbase and then there's everyone else. When you're not in the U.S., um, you know, they're, uh, they're probably not as big. I know they're, they're in other countries, but they're probably not as big as they are here. But yeah, Binance is listed as number one here. Robinhood number two. Oh, again, I think it's just pulling uh, Coinbase competitors. But either way, so yeah, anyway, I just wanted to get this video out there uh, sooner than later because everyone wants to invest in Kony with all this going on. So again, I hope this helps. More importantly, I hope it helps you guys, you know, just how, how to research things. It's really, it's not rocket science. What, what this is, it's just basic stuff, right? It's just you need to put the numbers, you know, run the numbers, see if it makes sense for you. Does it meet your risk tolerance? Things like that. Um, but yeah, so that's it. But anyway, um, for those of you who don't know actually what Kony is, um, sorry, I keep saying I'm almost done, but I wanted to just mention what it is. Kony is a yield max fund um, that's, you know, again, yield max sells covered calls on uh, different individual stocks and their distribution rate is 139%. This means their annualized yield right now based on the last payment is 139%. Sorry, I should have covered that in the beginning. But this is their distribution history. So October, they paid 120. November, they paid $1.07. Uh, December, they paid 246. And then just this month, they paid 269. And that's because their implied volatility is very high. And also, they've been on a bullish run, so they've been making a lot of money on what they call their synthetic position. So they hold a synthetic position, which allows them to sell calls as well. So they hold a synthetic and they sell weekly calls, which it's a really, it's a really cool concept. So if you guys don't know what yield max is, please check it out. Um, I, these are very high risk, though. Keep that in mind. Uh, Colony launched uh, August 14th, 2023. Their expense ratio is 0.99%. Most people will say that's high, but if you look at their annualized distribution rate, you're, you're going to be like, okay, whatever, take it, take my money. Oh yeah, so that's it. Um, I just wanted to get that out there. I forgot. Um, net assets, 309 million, and it's growing very rapidly. All right, that's it. I got to go. Um, I'll launch this video today, probably around 3 p.m. But like I said, if you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you have any questions, leave in the comments. Let me know what you think. Either way. All right, take care.